Tom just got here, we're at Rocky Mountain Specialty Gear, and I was telling him I've not shortened my draw length, so to speak, but I had uh, shortened my anchor point a little bit. Um, we put a clicker on the bow a couple weeks ago, and it has been huge, a uh, huge help for me. And I, as I'm kind of learning, I, I always, I really like micro, I, I overanalyze maybe what I'm doing, and what could I could potentially doing wrong. And one of the things I found is I, because of my anchor wasn't the most consistent back here, I was maybe, I don't know what you call it, over anchoring. I, I was drawing too far back to anchor, and I was just telling Tom when he came in to look at me, because I haven't, I don't think changed anything in my shot sequence. I've just changed the position of my hand at full, when I go to full draw. Now, the one thing I do more now is I will triple click, because I'll catch myself going back to that initial anchor I had. I don't know if triple clicking is bad, but it, it definitely, I have seen to be shooting more consistent with where my hand is now. But now, what, what do you think about that as far as? I'm thinking we're gonna see in a minute here, but what I think is going on is that some guys will, will overextend that anchor point. And because, so if I'm drawing the bow and I draw it in like load, it's an angular movement, right? This elbow's coming around, scapula's moving towards the spine. So if I'm in here and I load, there's the spot, man. I'm gonna go, you're gonna go to where that scapula kind of hits the wall, you have that feeling. Yeah. So it's like you're pulling to the wall on a compound, yeah. on load or draw. So if we load, there's where your anchor point should be. And you're, when, when this thing comes in and I draw a bow, bam, there's the depth of your anchor point. Mm -hmm. So it's load, it's anchor. Now, anything past that? Yeah. It's got to be an impingement. It's got to be a shoulder pull. Yeah. I can, I can, like, uh, push or, like, uh, try to draw in the direction my elbow's pointing, but that's an overextension. That's, that's going to impinge your shoulder. That's not back tension. It's a diagnostic tool. If I look at the angle of his back, it's at least perpendicular to the target, maybe a little past. If we look at the position of the elbow, that strain is about right here. He's inside the string. Fantastic. It's a diagnostic tool. This elbow should sweep in this direction. That's not the tension he's fo he's focusing on downward, that's but that's a natural result of a good of a good release. A guy with flexibility, when that does break, this thing is going to stay on the face. It's going to leave the face. It's going to end up over the shoulder. But we've talked about the flexibility issues that, that Aaron has, and it's not an issue. Uh, it's, it gives them a lot of advantage, that strength and all, all that, those freaking guns he's got. But anyway, so it comes linear and then you'll see it come out a bit, but you'll see this perfect movement for back tension. So go ahead and shoot an arrow. And, and arrow well, arrow these guys right. are grabbing their arrows. Yeah. He'll film me in slow motion and, and, and you're drawing lines on the film with one of your training tools on your phone. Before they go. Yeah. yeah where where my elbow should go, and then we watch it, did my elbow follow that line, uh, and so on and so forth, which is, that app on your phone is super handy. Um, so yeah, we'll see. What's cool is, we've done that, and every, from the first time, I said, okay, see this line right here, this is where your elbow should travel, and the tip of his elbow went right down the line. Like, that's back tension, that's beautiful. Watch how this elbow moves here. Let's get back here, look at with you, Frank. Look where, look where his finish position is. I mean, you know, Coach Lee and every good coach that you ever talk to is going to talk about focus on the finish position. You know, tension direction, right? Tension in the right direction. And what we're really focused on is this spot here. I'm really not trying to just get through the string. I'm really focused on this whole, this entire uh, follow-through position to here. And, You've got it in spades. I mean, that's that's a gorgeous release. The other thing we worked on too, I say we as in uh, Tom, was actually my 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 pull or my draw movement, where he's got um, basically I've got a little bit of uh, flex outward in my wrist, just enough. I'm actually not pointing at the target when I'm draw. I'm actually quite a ways left, but it's actually transferring. I'm not very good at explaining it. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm I'm getting into draw a lot easier. So when he, when Aaron starts his draw from out here a bit, not linear to the target, but he's got the arrow tilted a little bit. 
And if he can take this out here about three inches, he's loading this right away. We're seeing that scapula move immediately. So he's engaging that back right now. Where before, if you can imagine, I just pointed straight at the target and pulled it back. It worked for me. But what I get less now is less fatigue back there over time as well. I don't know if that's a byproduct of that or not. So but you're getting stronger, right? Yeah. One thing I notice is my fingers don't hurt, and uh, that's a huge thing for me is my fingers, when I say would hurt, get a little bit closer up. This finger here at the bottom initially was just raw and bloody, when I say initially, when I first started shooting again, and that was for me coming down, out and down, out and down, hanging my, my finger, and you fix that, then it's it transfers. It's also plus too much tension in that finger. Yep primary re reason that guy exists we want to keep pinch off this middle guy this yeah. middle guy's doing most of the work so when that guy is just sitting on there lightly on the pad he's keeping a bunch of that triangle off the string off this middle guy that's got to come out clean that's it, doing most of the work and tom handled that in one one shot with me with the uh basically the draw we just showed you and kind of reposit making a conscious effort of repositioning my fingers uh, well, initially, till it became second nature, because it wasn't comfortable at first, because I was digging too deep with uh, with this finger here. Now, the next issue I had was this middle, my middle finger, was dragging that because of that downward motion. I was still catching a little bit with my middle finger. How I'm not sure, but I wasn't catching it with this. I, and maybe it was because we changed the, the where this was placed on the string. Mm -hmm. That only lasted a little bit. But then it went to the tip of the finger because I was still digging in a little too deep, I think, with my middle finger or something. It, it could have been. It could have been just because your middle your finger never a, saw anything. <laughs> <laughs> could have been just because that middle finger was more conscious. So when, when a break happens subconsciously and it's linked to that click, there's an immediate, complete relaxation in your flexors. And that string just pops them out of the way. Yeah. But if you're trying to open them, you can't get it open, so there's drag all the way out, and you're probably nicking that tip of that finger. I think what happened is I was maybe opening more than I should have been because the clicker took that away immediately, mm -hmm. and maybe that cl clicker made it, and I don't know, but made it more natural because that, that clicker definitely, I don't hit it. And you've seen blood shooting out the front of this bandage you have too because I'm too stupid to stop. But now with that clicker, it's it's taken it away, so I, I can't yeah. say enough about having that clicker on there. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Uh, not much else. I mean, on that release, there's two things in your shot that have got to be subconscious that releases one of them. Yeah. That's why we like to link it to an external trigger and your aim, right? But if, you're, if your release is cognitive at all, you're going to have tension of that string dragging through there, especially if you're trying to open your fingers. Whereas a subconscious release is just an immediate, sudden relaxation of all these flexors down here. And that string just pops out of the way. So and there's no tension. It's clean. It's smooth. It's, it breaks, breaks. I tried sweet. to explain to somebody when I do it right, it's kind of almost like a book slipping out of my hands on accident. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's the best way to explain it, but when I do it right, I don't have any pain when a book slips out of my hands. If a book slips and I'm trying to grab it and reef on it, yeah. there's maybe some pain. There's well, tension. Yeah. When I do things jacked up with my release, and I generally know because one of these fingers is, is hurting. Um, so either way, well, man, I appreciate everything. <laughs> <laughs> um.